Welcome to Miss Casusa's magical world of math. Beautiful math. Origami. Let's get serious. This year, you're going to be learning how to think like a mathematician. You're going to be problem solving. Writing functions. Making connections. Learning about finances and business and planning for your financial future. Building numeracy so that you understand all those statistics going on on Facebook and everything happening on the news? Harmless, either. An analysis of Nielsen data from the Knight Foundation shows a widening gap between liberals who say they trust the media and conservatives who say they don't. The key research there finds that the most... And practice, practice, practice. We always have to practice so we get better and better. Making meaning of situations and problems is the first step to solving them. And that's what this year is about, and that's what this first assignment is about. We want to make sure that we're reviewing all of those important numeracy skills that you've been learning your whole life, and we want to build on them so that you guys are super strong and understand everything that comes your way. Couple things that you're going to need to remember for this first Delta Math. If you're doing a Delta Math and you don't know how to do it, click Show Example on the top, and look at the example, or click watch video and watch the video. Good luck. If you have questions on the Delta Math, email me and I can do a one-on-one -on -one tutoring session with you. But why do we need to know all of this anyway? And where does it all come from? Let's find out how math is used in the real world. We call that applied mathematics. Let's take a look. The mathematics we learn in school doesn't quite do the field of mathematics justice. We only get a glimpse at one corner of it, but mathematics as a whole is a huge and wonderfully diverse subject. My aim with this video is to show you all of that amazing stuff. We'll start back at the very beginning. The origin of mathematics lies in counting. In fact, counting is not just a human trait. Other animals are able to count as well. And evidence for human counting goes back to prehistoric times with check marks made in bones. There were several innovations over the years, with the Egyptians having the first equation, the ancient Greeks making strides in many areas like geometry and numerology, and negative numbers were invented in China, and zero as a number was first used in India. Then, in the golden age of Islam, Persian mathematicians made further strides and the first book on algebra was written. Then mathematics boomed in the Renaissance along with the sciences. Now there's a lot more to the history of mathematics than what I've just said, but I'm gonna to jump to the modern age and mathematics as we know it now. Modern mathematics can broadly be broken down into two areas. Pure maths, the study of mathematics for its own sake, and applied maths, when you develop mathematics to help solve some real world problem. But there's a lot of crossover. In fact, many times in history, someone's gone off into the mathematical wilderness, motivated purely by curiosity and, and kind of guided by a sense of aesthetics. And then they've created a whole bunch of new mathematics, which is nice and interesting, but it doesn't really do anything useful. 
But then, say, a hundred years later, someone will be working on some problem at the cutting edge of physics or computer science, and they'll discover that this old theory in pure math is exactly what they need to solve their real-world problems, which is amazing, I think. And this kind of thing has happened so many times over the last few centuries. It's interesting how often something so abstract ends up being really useful. But I should also mention that pure mathematics on its own is still a very valuable thing to do because it can be fascinating and on its own can have a real beauty and elegance that almost becomes like art. Okay, we'll start with physics, which uses just about everything on the left-hand side to some degree. Mathematical and theoretical physics has a very close relationship with pure maths. Mathematics is also used in the other natural sciences, with mathematical chemistry and biomathematics, which look at loads of stuff from modelling molecules to evolutionary biology. Mathematics is also used extensively in engineering. Building things has taken a lot of maths since the Egyptians and Babylonian times. Very complex electrical systems like aeroplanes or the power grid use methods in dynamical systems called control theory. Numerical analysis is a mathematical tool commonly used in places where mathematics becomes too complex to solve completely. So instead you use lots of simple approximations and combine them all together to get a good approximate answers. For example, if you put a circle inside a square, throw darts at it, and then compare the number of darts in the circle and the square portions, you can approximate the value of pi. But in the real world, numerical analysis is done on huge computers. Game theory looks at what the best choices are given a set of rules and rational players, and it's used in economics when the players can be intelligent, but not always, and other areas like psychology and biology. Probability is the study of random events like coin tosses or dice or humans, and statistics is the study of large collections of random processes or the organization and analysis of data. This is obviously related to mathematical finance, where you want to model financial systems and get an edge to win all those fat stacks. Related to this is optimization, where you're trying to calculate the best choice amongst a set of many different options or constraints, which you normally visualize as trying to find the highest or lowest point of a function. Optimization problems are second nature to us humans, and we do them all the time, trying to get the best value for money or trying to maximize our happiness in some way. Another area that's very deeply related to pure mathematics is computer science, and the rules of computer science were actually derived in pure maths and is another example of something that was worked out way before programmable computers were built. Machine learning, the creation of intelligent computer systems, uses many areas in mathematics like linear algebra, optimization, dynamical systems, and probability. And finally, the theory of cryptography is very important to computation and uses a lot of pure maths like combinatorics and number theory. So that covers the main sections of pure and applied mathematics. So that is the map of mathematics. Now, the thing I've loved most about learning maths is that feeling you get where something that seems so confusing finally clicks in your brain and everything makes sense, like an epiphany moment, kind of like seeing through the matrix. In fact, some of my most satisfying intellectual moments have been understanding some part of mathematics and then feeling like I had a glimpse at the fundamental nature of the universe in all of its symmetrical wonder. It's great. I love it. This is going to be an amazing year. I can't wait to learn math with you guys. Let's get started.